Hello and welcome. Today we'll be going over questions number 11 through 20 in the math portion of the 2018 to 2019 official practice ACT. Starting with number 11, we see the question asks, what is the slope of the line through point negative 2, 1 and 2, negative 5 in the standard xy coordinate plane? So our equation for slope is left over run, which is really just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So now we just plug in our numbers from our points. So starting with y2, we're going to do negative 5 minus 1 divided by 2 minus negative 2, which we can write simply as 2 plus 2. Doing that subtraction, we can find negative 5 minus 1, that's negative 6, divided by 4. We can simplify that, divide both of these by 2, and we get negative 3 over 2. Looking at our answers, that matches D. So our answer to number 11 is D. In Cherokee County, the fine for speeding is $17.00. For each mile per hour, the driver is traveling over the posted speed limit. In Cherokee County, Kirk was fined $221 for speeding on a road with a posted speed limit of 30 miles per hour. Kirk was fined for traveling at what speed in miles per hour? So for this one, we know that the speed limit is 30. But right now, that's not the most important thing. We know that he was fined a total of $221. So 221 and we also know that the fine for speeding is $17 for each mile per hour the driver's traveling over the speed limit. So if we figure out $221, what's that divided by 17? Well, 221 divided by 17, that is 13. So we know that he was driving 13 miles per hour over the speed limit. It might be tempting here to look at your answers and say, well, F is 13, but our question is not asking how fast over the speed limit he was driving. It's asking what at what speed was he traveling in miles per hour? So he was fined for traveling 13 miles over the speed limit, which is 30. So we do 13 plus 30, which gives us 43 miles per hour. And that matches our answer choice H of 43. So our answer to number 12 is H. Number 13, what is the sum of the solutions of the two equations below? What they're really asking us here is to first up top solve for X, find out what X equals, and then add that to what we find for y in the second equation. So starting with x, 8 times x equals 12, we can solve for x by just dividing both sides by 8. So we know that x is equal to 3 over 2 or 1 and 1 half. Now let's try to solve for y. We're going to start with 2y plus 10 equals 22. We need to get this 10 over to the other side, so we subtract both sides by 10. We get 2y equals 12. And then we divide both sides by 2, get y alone, and we get y equals 6. So now we need to add our y value and our x value to find the sum of the solutions of the two equations. We can do this by, I think, using this form might be a little bit easier. You can just add 6 plus 1 and 1 half. We can add our whole numbers to get 7, and then we bring our fraction, which is 1 half. We could also solve this by changing them to have um, common bases. So if we want to add 3 over 2 and 6 over 1, 
we can multiply this fraction, so both sides by 2, so they have common denominators. And then we're going to get 12 over 2 plus 3 over 2. And that will be 15 over 2, which is the same thing as 7 and 1 half. But this way is a little bit faster. Either way works fine, though. So our answer for both of these, either way we do it, it's going to be 7 and a half, which matches our answer choice B. So our answer to number 13 is B. Number 14. The average of five distinct scores has the same value as the median of the five scores. The sum of the five scores is 420. What is the sum of the four scores that are not the median? So we know that the average of the scores has the same value of the median as the median. So let's find the average of the scores. We know that we have 420 for the sum. We divide that by 5, our total number of terms, and we get 84. So now we know that our median, it's the same as our average, so our median is 84. Now we want to know what the sum of the four scores that are not the median is. So we know the sum including the medium, median is 420. And now we know our median, so we just subtract that from 420. So 420 minus 84, that's 336. So that is the sum of our four scores that are not the median. And that is our option H. What is the value of the expression below for number 15? We have an absolute value equation here. So we can start by completing the things inside the innermost absolute values. So negative 8 plus 4, that is equal to negative 4. Minus 3 minus 9, that's negative 6. Now we keep our absolute value signs here because now we're going to use those absolute value signs. So the absolute value of negative 4, that's 4. And then the absolute value of negative 6, that's 6. So we have 4 minus 6 inside our outermost absolute values, which 4 minus 6, that is negative 2. But the absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. So our answer to number 15 is D. Two. Number 16, which of the following expressions is equivalent to x to the 2 3rd power? So we know that anytime we have x to the 1 half power, that's equal to the square root. So anytime we have a number x to the power of 1 over y, that's going to be equal to the y root of our number. So if we just had x to the 1 third, that would be the same as saying the cube root of x. And we see here our, the bottom of our fraction in our exponent is 3. So we know we're going to need a cube root. So which of these ones have a cube root? Not f, not g, not h. So now we're just down to j and k. And if we look at the top of our fraction, we still have a 2 right there. That 2 has to go on the inside of our root. So we have x squared underneath the cube root, which gives us option k as our answer. Number 17, in the standard xy coordinate plane, what is the slope of the line given by the equation 4x equals 7y plus 5? So for this equation, we want to get it into slope-intercept form, which y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. So that's where it crosses the y-axis. So in order to do that, all we really have to do is get y by itself. 
So in this equation, we have 4x equals 7y plus 5. So let's try and get y by itself first by subtracting 5 from both sides. I'm going to reorder this as well. So 7y is going to be on the left side. And then we'll get 4x minus 5. Now, y isn't by itself yet. We have to divide both sides by 7. We get y equals 4 seventh x minus 5 over 7. So our slope in this equation is whichever number is with x. So in this one, it's 4 over 7, which matches our answer choice B, 4 over 7. So our answer to number 17 is B. Number 18, for which of the following conditions will the sum of integers m and n always be an odd integer? If m is an odd integer, well, let's try that out. So maybe m is 3, but n is 1. Another odd integer, 3 plus 1, well, that's 4. Okay, well then that's not true because that's not always going to be an odd integer. We could have also tried 3 plus 3. That equals 6. What if we did an even number? We did 3 plus 2. That equals 5. That's an odd integer, so that one works. So if we were only to try this combination, we might be tricked into thinking that's the correct answer. But we know that it works if both of them are odd integers. And g, would we would run into the same problem as f. Because in this one, we could just say, well, now n is 3 and m is 1. And then here we could say, well, now n is 3, but m is 2. It only works if one is odd and one is even. So it won't be g. What if they're both odd? Well, that's what we tried up here. They're both odd. We tried the 3 plus 3. Then we get even. 3 plus 1, we get even. So that will not work. What if they're both even integers? Hmm. Well, let's try. What if we do 2 plus 2? We get another even number. What if we do 10 plus 12? Well, we get 22. That's another even number. So we're always going to get an even answer. What about k? m is an odd integer and n is an even integer. So we could say m is going to be 5 and n is going to be even. So that'll be 2. So m is 5, n is 2. We add those together and like 7, which is an odd integer. That one works. Let's try one more just to be safe. So m is an odd integer. Let's say it's 1. And n is even. Let's say 8. 1 plus 8, that's 9. And again, that's odd. And we've eliminated all of our other choices, so our answer is k. Number 19, the lengths of two legs of a right triangle ABC is shown below, and the lengths are given in inches. The midpoint of AB is how many inches from A? So they're asking this point right here about how far away is that from A? What's this distance? We want to know. Let's redraw this a little bit so that it actually, it's both points. There we go. What's that distance? So how could we do this? Well, first of all, we know we have a right triangle, so we can use our handy dandy Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, we know A and B. We'll call this side A. So we'll do 32 squared plus 24 squared equals C squared. We can type those in our calculator. We get 32 squared. We find out that's 1024 plus 576, 
we can set that again equal to c squared. Now we know c squared is equal to 1600. To solve for c, we take the square root and we get c is equal to 40, which we can look at our triangle and see if that looks like a reasonable number. And I think it does. It's bigger than both of our other sides. Our hypotenuse always has to be bigger than both other sides. And it's close enough where it's a realistic length. Now, this gives us the length of side AB. But we want to know how far is point A from the midpoint of this line. Well, if it's the midpoint, it's just going to be half of that length. So we know it's going to be 40 divided by 2, which is 20. So we know our distance from A to our midpoint is going to be 20. Option B. 19 is B. Moving on to number 20. In triangle DEF, the length of DE is the square root of 30 inches, and the length of uh, side EF is 3 inches. If it can be determined, what is the length in inches of side DF? Well, this one, we don't know any of the angles. Nowhere in here does it tell us angles. It tells us the side length of DE. It tells us the side length of EF. And they want us to figure out, well, what's the side length of DF? But because we don't know any angles, our triangle could look like this. It could look like this. We don't know what the angles look like. Well, if we had a right triangle, if they said it was a right triangle, we could figure that out. And we could use our Pythagorean theorem again. But they don't say anywhere in this question that it's a right triangle. And they don't give us any angles. Therefore, it cannot be determined from the given information. And that was number 11 through 20 in the 2018 to 2019 official preparing for the ACT practice test. In our next video, we will go over number 21 through 30. So please join us for that video. Thanks for watching.